everyone, you're watching GRTS and this is a special panel on the OIC summit, but we'll be looking at the OIC as an organization. And with me in the studio here at mile seven, Radio Gambia as we used to know it, is Mr. Hasum Sisi, Director General, National Center for Arts and Culture. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Francis. And also Dr. Usman Solomon Ayeba, Political Science Lecturer at the University of the Gambia. Welcome, sir. Thank you for having me. Gentlemen, as we gear towards the grand hosting of the OIC summit here by the Gambia, it's been, you know, in the making for quite a while now, but I believe we've, we're almost there. So, to at least look, make sure we keep the population informed as to what the organization itself is about, its aims and objectives, achievements, and also challenges. I believe it's important we look at it from a professional point of view. With me is Mr. Sisi, who will look at the historical aspects, some of the historical contributions and achievements of the I mean, body itself, and also professor will look at, or doctor will look at, you know, its achievements in the political arena, and also impacts, and also shortcomings if possible. Mr. Sisi, could you please tell us how and when OIC came into being? Well, thank you very much. Um, the, the story you know, started um, in the late 1960s. This was the area um, and the period of decolonization. Mm -hmm. We must remember that um, a lot of the Islamic world mm -hmm. um, suffered some form of colonial rule or another. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly after the fall of the Ottoman Empire, the Great Ottoman Empire, in 1918, um, the former, you know, um, territories of the Ottoman, you know, um, present the Middle East, were divided, you know, between the French and the British, you know, who colonized them. Um, places like Lebanon, Syria, Saudi Arabia, I mean, you know, Jordan, you know, I mean, I mean, Malaysia, you know, India, the Gambia, Nigeria. So um, that is very, very important because the OIC member states also share that heritage, that colonial heritage. Mm -hmm. Now, another um, very, very important element mm -hmm. we have to factor is the role of the current and ongoing mm -hmm. um, Palestinian, you know, Israeli, you know, issue. Right. You know, from 1948 to date, mm -hmm. um, with the establishment of the Palestinian state, mm -hmm. um, there has been a lot of, you know, I mean, you know, problems, right. uh, you know, between, um, you know, the Palestinians, you know, and the Jewish state. Right. Um, in late 19, in the summer of 1969, mm -hmm. yes, it uh, went into a very, very ugly phase. Mm -hmm. Uh, but maybe not as ugly as the face in which we are in currently in Gaza. Mm -hmm. But there was an arson attack mm -hmm. on, you know, the Great Mosque mm -hmm. in Jerusalem. Is it the Al-Aqsa Mosque? Yes. You know, somebody, uh, you know, petrol bomb this Muslim holy site. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine the outrage mm -hmm. that this caused. Mm -hmm. And this was just two years mm -hmm. after the I mean, Arab-Israeli war, mm -hmm. you know, what they are called the Six-Day War, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then um, to add injury, you know, to the, you know, to the injuries of the Muslim world, mm -hmm. we had this, you know, as an attack on Al-Aqsa. So really, you know, some, you know, thoughtful, you know, leaders in the Arab world said, well, in the Arab and Islamic world, said that, um, you know, we should just do something and it looks like unity mm -hmm. will be our strength right. as far as the Islamic Ummah is concerned. Right. So things started to come together, you know, meetings, you know, bilaterals, you know, and so on, until you have something called the Organization of Islamic Conference. Initially? Yes, initially, that's OIC. So such a tragic incident served as a catalyst to the formation of the body that now has 57 member states. Yes. And I believe some other five countries that haven't given you know observer status. Exactly. Yeah. So so it was really it was this um, very very ugly attack mm -hmm. 
um, against this Muslim holy site mm -hmm. in Al Aqsa, mm -hmm. and that really led um, that you know, precipitated um, the formation of the body now called the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. All right. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. I mean, you were listening keenly, and yeah. I believe you would want to additional <laughs> give one or two statements to additional yeah. for enrich yeah. what we've been given so far by Mr. Cici. Yeah. Um, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Cici, for providing that insight. Mm -hmm. um, but just to add a flesh mm -hmm. to what he has said, uh, I mean, he has put it in a very historical, correct historical perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you also look beyond what he has said, mm -hmm. is also the fact that the person who actually masterminded the Asan attack, mm -hmm. you know, against the, because al qasa Mox is the third holiest site to Muslim. You are right. Uh, across the world. Um, he, wa he was a Jewish of mm. Australian, you know, parentage. Yes, yes, uh, yes. I think his name is Michael Dennis. Yes. Uh, so he attacked the mosque and the mosque was bombed. And not just bombed, because the pulpit, mm -hmm. you know, the pulpit within the al qasa Mosque that was bombed is something that was very, very historical. 800 year old, yes, I believe. Yes, It also, I believe, consumed the roof. Consumed it the roof. It was 800 years old. Yes. I mean, it took uh, until 2007 before it was reconstructed, mm -hmm. you know, by the Jordanian, um, 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 you know, artists that mm -hmm. were brought in to reconstruct that, uh, this thing. And this meant a lot mm -hmm. to the Muslim uh, community mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, as a result of that, um, there is this particular person, um, you know, uh, I think his name is Amin mm -hmm. Al Hussein, mm -hmm. uh, who called for a, an Islamic summit, mm -hmm. summit of all the head of states mm -hmm. of Muslim countries to come together, mm -hmm. you know, um, in order to take a decisive action to protect and to promote the interests of Muslims around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, this actually precipitated about 24 Arab countries, mm -hmm. Muslim countries, uh, petitioning mm -hmm. Um, uh, uh, writing a complaint mm -hmm. to the United Nations, Nations yes. uh, of what of this incident that happened. And mm -hmm. don't forget that when this incident happened, like he rightly said, mm -hmm. it was not quite long when um, we had Israeli Arab conflict mm -hmm. of 1967. Mm -hmm. That is about. And so, in the eyes of the Muslim world, the Zionist regime mm -hmm. in Israel, mm -hmm. you know, was complicit. Mm -hmm. And so, there was call for uh, a summit mm -hmm. of head of state of Islamic countries. Mm -hmm. And so by September mm -hmm. 25th, 1969, mm -hmm. uh, in Rabat, mm -hmm. King Hassan II of Morocco, mm -hmm. you know, invited Muslim head of state and leaders, mm -hmm. you know, for discussion mm -hmm. on the way forward, mm -hmm. on how to protect the interest of Muslims, mm -hmm. you know, and to protect the values of mm -hmm. Islam across mm -hmm. the world. And mm -hmm. so uh, this precipitated. Mm -hmm. This is uh, this is an incident that actually led to the formation of the uh, OIC. Uh, I think the following year, mm -hmm. uh, in March 1970, mm -hmm. uh, also mm -hmm. there was first meeting, meeting of, of uh, foreign, uh, foreign ministers, foreign ministers mm -hmm. in Jeddah. Mm -hmm. uh, and so by the following year, also I think May, May 1971, mm -hmm. then the secretariat mm -hmm. um, establishing the and the charter establishing the OIC. Mm -hmm you know, fully came into operation. So this is, this yes. are some of the things that Big actually... explanation of the genesis of the body yes. itself. Yeah, it's, uh, yes. yes. So, Mr. Sisi, yeah, what... Yes, uh, please, uh, uh, come in, come in. Uh, uh, mm. To add to what Professor has just said, mm -hmm. I, I also have to bring in the three parts mm -hmm. um, as far as the OIC's, uh, you know, formation was concerned. Mm -hmm. You have the Pan-Arabism mm -hmm. of Gamal Abdel Nasser, mm -hmm. you know, um, who died in... September 1970, mm -hmm. just after this, you know, tragic, I mean, I mean, Asin. Mm -hmm. um, you have also mm -hmm. Pan-Africanism, mm -hmm. which you also espoused, mm -hmm. you know, with, you know, King Hassan of Morocco, you mm -hmm. know, like Kwame Nkrumah, Sekuture, mm -hmm. and also the Pan-Islamism, mm -hmm. you see. So you have all these three, I mean, I mean, I mean, concepts, mm -hmm. the, you know, these three trends, mm -hmm. you know, coming together mm -hmm. to fit into the establishment of the OIC. Now, if you look at the Pan-African element, um, there was a lot of um, interest, um, a lot of um, work mm -hmm. done uh, by, you know, African countries. You know, I mean, he just mentioned Morocco, mm -hmm. but we also have to mention Egypt. Mm -hmm. You know, Secretary is Guinea, mm -hmm. uh, you know, at this, you know, initial, initial meetings. 
Then also I mean Nasser, you know, he, he combined, you know, the Pan Arabism mm -hmm. and the Pan Africanism. Mm -hmm. That's why in fact he created the United Arab Republic, you know, which brought together Syria Egypt and Syria, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for you know for at least close to a decade. Mm -hmm. You see. And then of course uh, you know the pan Islamism. I mean the I mean I mean a concept that Islam is unique mm -hmm. and you know singular. Uh, you know, be the one, you know, I mean, Africa, mm -hmm. or Muslims in the Arab world, mm -hmm. or Muslims in the Caribbean, I mean, all of them, uh, you know, share a common, I mean, I mean, faith, you know, and a common destiny. So these three concepts all, you know, came together, you know, to help, you know, strengthen the, the you know, the, 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 I mean, organization we now call um, the OIC. OIC. You are right. It came as a result, I believe, about as a result of principally a grievance that was shared by Muslim countries. And I want to believe that there and then, there were issues between those countries as well. But not, notwithstanding, they were able to overcome those issues. What would you say were the early achievements of the body then? Uh, well, the OIC had, um, you know, at the very, very beginning, a very, very lucid approach. Um, to Muslim affairs, because really Islam is at the center of OIC mm -hmm. that we have to um, take note of. Mm -hmm. But we also have to note that um, religious tolerance is also at the center of the OIC, mm -hmm. because of the 57 member states, uh, you know, some of them don't even have Muslim majority. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. maybe there are few, maybe a handful or more. But just to tell you. That I mean, I mean, uh, I mean. Although Islam is at the center of the OIC, mm -hmm. you know, religious tolerance is also at the center of the OIC, because many of the OIC member states also have sizable non-Muslim populations. You know that we have to take a note of. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, I mean, you know, immediately after the OIC, you know, was created, mm -hmm. then another, you know, the third or maybe the fourth Arab-Israeli war, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the Yom Kippur. The war of was the one that was, okay, that was the one fought in 1973. Yeah, so you can see maybe just a few months after, mm -hmm. I you know the OIC, I you know was formally, mm -hmm. I you know put together. Mm -hmm. Then you had another war, I you know, and then of course you know the oil crisis of that year, mm -hmm. uh, because the Arab countries, you know, you know, I mean under OPEC, we were, you know, we are producing most of the world's oil, mm -hmm. and you know because of the Israeli attack, mm -hmm. I you know, I mean they you know decided to use oil. You know, as a weapon, mm -hmm. you know, which led to the you know oil crisis of 1973, mm -hmm. which almost you know decimated mm -hmm. the economies of small uh, Muslim states like the Gambia. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I mean, and then um, the OIC again, you know, now had to come in, you know, so that it no longer uh, became uh, simply, a, if you like, a political uh, you know religious organization, mm -hmm. but also started to have a social agenda. Uh, you know how to i mean i mean people had to walk through the oic to make sure that the you know arab you know oil producing countries uh, you know i mean i mean i mean discontinued boycott mm -hmm. uh, you know of supplying oil uh, you know to the world market uh, you, you know said that you know by 1974 the oil prices you know had stabilized again although a lot of damage had been done mm -hmm. you know to a lot of the economies you know of, of poorer countries you know but at least you know that was a very very if you can say like a baptism of fire, you know, for the new organization mm -hmm. that you know, uh, I mean, uh, people were able to walk through it mm -hmm. to bring an end to the oil crisis um, of 1973. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Doctor, I believe I can. I mean, I just can't imagine an organization that is barely four years old. Mm -hmm. You know, having that power, that strength to be able to bring not only he cited the Gambia, but you know, bringing countries as powerful as the U.S. to their knees, does that not or symbolize how powerful this body is, provided they can harness their collective potential? Yeah. Um, yeah. OIC is a very powerful organization, a governmental organization, so to say. Um, if you look at it, statistics shows that, you know, OIC is the second most largest intergovernmental organization after the United Nations. Mm -hmm. Uh, members, uh, membership of the organization transverses across about four continents, four continents yes, yes. Africa, Europe, 
Asia, you know, and Latin America, uh, uh -huh. South America, if yes, you, yes, if you yes, want to, yes, if you want yes. to put it that way. So, um, and the population it controls, it controls about 1.9 billion, mm -hmm. you know, population of mm -hmm. member states. Mm -hmm. uh, it has 57, you know, member states as of today, mm -hmm. um, with five, you know, countries that are still observing, mm -hmm. you know, at the observer status. Observer status. Observer status. So, mm -hmm. observer status. so by the time those ones, you know, were fully admitted into mm -hmm. it, we are talking about more than, you know, 65, mm -hmm. uh, yes, or more than, more than 60 mm -hmm. country member nations. So it's a very powerful uh, organization. And also, if you look at it, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. OEL play a very major critical role mm -hmm. in OIC. Most of the members from the Middle East are OEL-rich countries, mm -hmm. and we know the uh, influence or impact of OEL in world global affairs and, you know, the geopolitics, mm -hmm. the, the strategic location of most of the members, mm -hmm. you know, of OIC have also placed OIC, mm -hmm. you know, to assert a kind of uh, very powerful influence, mm -hmm. um, not just within the Muslim Umar, but also across the world. And so... The Red Sea, yes, the Strait the, of Hormuz, the Strait of Hormuz mm -hmm. you know, the Swiss Canal, mm -hmm. and all of the, this, all of these are within the um, geographical sphere of influence of members of OIC. And so it is understandable mm -hmm. why OIC, you know, exact the kind of influence they exact even on um, global powers like the United States and some Western uh, some Western countries. But also beyond that, we must also look at it that the OIC, yes, having all of this, you know, to their advantage, um, there are also some challenges uh, because he mentioned that just three years or less than three years after the organization, you know, was birthed, mm -hmm. Uh, you have Yom Kippur War of 1973 mm -hmm. uh, that brought the Israelis and the Arabs mm -hmm. into open confrontation again. But beyond that, we also had, you know, the Iran-Iraq you know, crisis. We will come to that. It's okay. So as not to preempt, I believe the second part of our discussion, just yeah, to remind crisis. those watching us. Okay. Yes, no, I mean, I mean, Mr. Sisi, kindly a minute, just mm -hmm. to remind those watching us that they watching a special panel devoted to. I mean, I mean, ongoing preparations for the OIC summit. Mm -hmm. But we are looking at the OIC as an organization, its founding, its rich history, success stories, and also challenges confronting the body. And just to remind you again, with me, I have Mr. Hasum Sisi, our erudite, you know, historian, you. who never, you know, I mean, shies away from, you know, at least, you know, helping the artists, you know, untangle some of these, you know, historical things that you know, we as journalists can find difficult to understand. And Dr. Usman Solomon Ayeba, political science lecturer from the University of the Gambia. Now having, you know, laid the ground with regard to the formation and early history of, you know, OIC, we've established how it was formed, what led to its formation, and also some of its early success stories, and at least, you know, one major achievement which was to additional you know, bring the world to its knees. It was about Islamic solidarity because of a sheer shared faith and all these things. Mm. But like you mentioned before I, you know, just you know, did this, you know, reintroduction, it was faced with a challenge mm. that was two major mm. Muslim countries, mm. neighboring countries for that matter, yeah. going to war and it was costly. Mm. Yeah. Financially and you know, when Otherwise. it comes to, you know, the human cost. <laughs> yes. So, was it a failure on the part of the OIC to make peace between the warring parties or, in fact, to prevent the outbreak of war? Um, thank you for that question. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm a teacher, mm -hmm. I'm a university teacher, and um, with my experience mm -hmm. and my reading, mm -hmm. you know, on peace and conflict, mm -hmm. uh, Sometimes peace is not the absence of war. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, realists will tell you that. Mm -hmm. That when we talk about peace, mm -hmm. it does not necessarily, mm -hmm. you know, connote that it will be there will be absence of war. Mm -hmm. uh, but the capacity mm -hmm. or the ability to manage, mm -hmm. you know, uh, conflict mm -hmm. to manage outbreak of war, mm -hmm. also, you know, suggest peace. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at it from that angle, um, we cannot say that OIC has failed because mm -hmm. member countries have to go to war. Mm -hmm you know, against one another. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at it, mm -hmm. even though the UN itself, as mm -hmm. a global, as a world organization, mm -hmm. 
you know, has been able to prevent the outbreak of Third World War so far since mm -hmm. its establishment in 1945. Mm -hmm. But it does not mean that, you know, there have been no war mm -hmm. since the coming into being mm -hmm. of the United Nations. The same also applies to mm -hmm. um, OIC. But what we are also saying is that um, it's, not a, it's not a kind of organization um, uh, since every member mm -hmm. originally, you know, were anticipated to be Muslim countries, that does not mean that it is organization that will be uh, violence free, mm -hmm. that will be foolproof when it comes to, you know, discontent, disagreement, and even open confrontation. So it's normal. Mm -hmm. um, but the way we measure the sources of every organization, just as we measure individual, is the capacity to handle this organization. So in that regard, mm -hmm. um, with respect to the Iran and Iraq crisis mm -hmm. that I mentioned, OIC played a very prominent role. Mm -hmm. Um, they were able to resolve that crisis. Mm -hmm. But having resolved that crisis, there were also much more bigger challenges, mm -hmm. you know, that is still um, a major snag mm -hmm. to OIC, and which is that if you look at most countries in the world, and particularly within the Middle East, mm -hmm. that are enmeshed in one form of crisis or the other, they are all members of OIC, whether you talk about Yemen, mm -hmm. uh, whether you talk about Syria, whether you talk about, um, you know, Libya, Mm -hmm. um, and other countries like that, they are, you know, that is to tell you that. Mm -hmm. And the reason for this is not far fetched. Mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, I always tell my students when we teach in class, we tell them there is this theory we call democratic peace theory. Mm -hmm. Democratic peace theory simply means that democracies do not go to war mm -hmm. with one another. Mm -hmm. And the argument is that if all countries are democratic, the chances of going to war will be minimal. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we also want to take that in further to OIC. Mm -hmm. uh, OIC is meant to promote the interest of a uh, Muslim, you know, uh, community around the world, mm -hmm. uh, to harmonize, to bring about, you know, uh, solidarity among Muslim nations mm -hmm. and among Muslim faithfuls all over the world. But, you know, like you said, uh, this there are also even within the Islamic food or Muslim food there are also differences, and so these differences sometimes serve as you know, uh, trigger mm -hmm. to crisis that we have. Um, beyond the Iraq-Iran crisis that we mentioned, there is also what we call, you know, Shia, uh, Sunni... We will come to that. that. We will come okay. to that. Thank you, sir. The reason why I'm interested in the, yeah. the Iran-Iraq war, yeah. I believe Gambia became a member of the OIC yes. in 1974. 1974. And yes. I believe at the height of the process of you know trying to bring about peace between the warring parties that was Iran and Iraq Saddam of the Kerabah Jawara our first president played a role I believe he sat on one of the community committees that you know worked tirelessly to bring about peace Islamic Peace Committee yes sir could you please expound on that oh, yes I the, the Islamic Peace Committee mm -hmm. uh, but like I mean doctor has said it, it was not the fault of the OIC mm -hmm that Iran and Iraq went to war mm -hmm. in, you know, from 1980 to 1988. Mm -hmm. But it was really an achievement mm -hmm. of the OIC mm -hmm. that the war ended, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, and here is where Saddam played a very, very you know, significant role, mm -hmm. you know, because the OIC from the beginning of the war, mm -hmm. um, you know, worked tirelessly mm -hmm. to, I mean, bring peace mm -hmm. between the two, I mean, I mean, Muslim states, that's Iran and Iraq. Mm -hmm. But of course, I mean, there is, like you said, there is a lot of, you know, geopolitical, you know, interference in all these international organizations, mm -hmm. not only the OIC, mm -hmm. uh, because, um, you know, detractors of Islam mm -hmm. um, really will not want mm -hmm. um, the OIC to be in peace, like OIC member states, mm -hmm. you know, to be in peace, mm -hmm. you, know, with, you know, with each other, mm -hmm. particularly oil giants like Iran and Iraq. Mm -hmm. So that explains why, mm -hmm. I mean, immediately the war started. Mm -hmm. You had some big powers, you know, taking sides, mm -hmm. you know, so that, I mean, the war will, you know, not end quickly. Mm -hmm. But despite that, you know, you know, Saddam so made some, you know, peace missions, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to Baghdad, you know, I mean, I mean met Saddam Hussein, uh, you know, and, and this was, um, you know, in 1984, and then again in 1985. And really, it was those peace missions that, you know, started the peace process, mm -hmm. you know, which finally, you know, culminated um, with the truce, you know, um, between Iran and Iraq, uh, you know, in 1988. But um, like you suggested at the, at the uh, you know, beginning, uh, the OIC is potentially the most 
powerful um, you know, member state-led organization in the world. Mm -hmm. Economically, mm -hmm. you know, demographically, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, politically, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. I mean, the amount of, um, you know, resources mm -hmm. um, that the OIC member states have, mm -hmm. the amount of you know, diplomatic, you know, clout mm -hmm. that they have, mm -hmm. I, you know, is, 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 you know, it's great. Mm -hmm. you know, in fact, it's the greatest, mm -hmm. you know, in the world. Mm -hmm. This is why the OIC has very, 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 you know, vast potential mm -hmm. uh, to really bring about a new world order mm -hmm. in terms of economy, in terms of politics, and in terms of society. But is it harnessing that potential, not maybe for a start, the whole world, but for residents and citizens of member countries? Well, I mean, like I said, I, I, you know, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of, I, I, you know, interference, you know, and because France is um, just like the African Union. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's such a big, you know, body, such a powerful, like potentially powerful body. Mm -hmm. But because of the tendencies, you know, the trends you know, inside the organization, it is still unable. So the same with the OIC. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, you suggested, you know, soon you see, you know, you say you are coming to that later. Mm -hmm. I mean, democracies, you know, Western democracies versus, I mean, I mean, I mean, non-Western democracies. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe there's even a language element, mm -hmm. uh, you know, tendency, mm -hmm. uh, you know, within the OIC, uh, you know, the, you know, the poorer countries, you know, versus the richer countries. Mm -hmm. So you have all these tendencies, you know, in the organization that, um, um, you know, that we need to paper over at least mm -hmm. so that the OIC will be readily, readily um, you know, available you know, to, I mean, I mean, I mean, be the, the greatest, you know, force um, in, in, in the world, yeah. you know, and I mean force, I mean force for good, you know, to end all conflicts, because the OIC, mm -hmm. you know, has a nuclear, you know, weapon state, mm -hmm. and that's Pakistan, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I mean, so, so this is a powerful body, this is by all accounts, the OIC is a very, very, a very powerful body, you know, so imagine it is able to, I mean, harness, mm -hmm. All this potential, um, the Islamic Ummah's you know, voice will um, be highly, highly, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, on challenge in, in, in all matters. No, all right. yes. Doctor, the potential is huge. It has huge economic muscle. Mm. It is spread across four continents. Africa in particular, I believe, accounts for if not 50 percent, 43 percent or thereabout yes. of member states. Yes. You have countries that are super rich, mm. filthy rich for that matter. You come to sub-Saharan Africa, countries that are also struggling to eke out a living. Mm. Don't you think that the body can harness its potential to be able to help, since we are talking about Islamic solidarity, help countries that are in the global south and our fellow Muslims? Uh, again, thank you for that question. Um, yes, you know, like we have all agreed here, we, we say that OIC member countries, mm -hmm. you know, command huge mm -hmm. resources and huge, you know, economic wealth mm -hmm. than, in fact, most organizations mm -hmm. in the world, with the exception of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. um, but why it appears as if it's difficult for OIC to actually address some of these menace, menace of poverty, mm -hmm. you know, because it's, it's what we call the Dutch disease. Mm -hmm. um, the Dutch disease uh, simply means the resource cost. Mm -hmm. You find out that across the world, mm -hmm. most countries or most regions mm -hmm. that are resource endowed mm -hmm. is where you have high rate of poverty, mm -hmm. is where you have high rate of conflict, mm -hmm. is where you have you know, um, intermittent crisis here and there, and you know, the living standard of people are generally poor. Mm -hmm. um, that is something that is paradox. Mm -hmm. That you know, paradoxical. Yeah, it's paradoxical. Mm -hmm. You know that why should you know countries that have resources mm -hmm. are the countries that are below the poverty line. So the same thing also applies to the same Dutch disease or resource cost mm -hmm. also applies to OIC. Yes, OIC member nations command, you know, huge um, resource endowment, uh, oil, natural gas, um, good, and whatever you can think of that can make, you know, these countries very great. Mm -hmm. But incidentally, you find out that, you know, poverty is still very, very, very endemic. And 
The reason is not far-fetched. Uh, my colleague mentioned uh, issue of internal, you know, interference mm -hmm. in the activity of of, OI, of OIC. Mm -hmm. Yes, OIC is meant to advance the cause of Islam and Muslim around the world and its members. But you find out that there are some actors, mm -hmm. uh, external or internal, mm -hmm. to it. Most of the time, it's not even external. Mm -hmm. It could also be internal. Mm -hmm. You know um, that. You know, it will be in their own interest, mm -hmm. um, for whatever reason, that the laudable objectives or aims of OIC are not meant. Uh, because whether you like it or not, these differences that we have identified, the fact that even within the organization that, you know, ten, that claim to promote solidarity among, you know, Muslim Umar, you also have this pocket of differences and all of that. And so when you have that kind of system in place, it becomes very, very difficult for this potential to mm -hmm. be actually harnessed mm -hmm. and, you know, for the Unleashed. Yes. For, for and we must not also lose sight of the fact that when the organization was born, mm -hmm. that was at the height of the Cold War. Cold War. And some of them, I believe, yes. were either aligned with the West or and some were aligned with the West, yes. with the East. Yes. And there were others who were in between. Yes, they were non-aligned. Were non-aligned. Non right. Did that also help reduce its yes. potential yes. to bring the Islamic Ummah together? Indeed. In fact, we still have echoes of the Cold War, mm -hmm. you know, in all these international organizations. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, sometimes it is apparent, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it is not, mm -hmm. um, but it is always present. Mm -hmm. um, because the Cold, you know, the Cold War lasted close to you know 50 years mm -hmm. you know um, so it will uh, you know um, have to take time mm -hmm. you know for the residues you know to 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 really you know completely go away mm -hmm. but you also have to realize that i mean international organizations like the oic mm -hmm. um are becoming increasingly relevant mm -hmm. you know because increasingly mm -hmm. um we live in a world mm -hmm. where um, unity, mm -hmm. you know, is strength. Mm -hmm. You see, this is why, for example, the Europeans are doing everything possible mm -hmm. to enlarge, you know, the, um, I mean, the European Union, mm -hmm. you know, to enlarge NATO. Mm -hmm. You know, Russia is working, you know, to enlarge and strengthen, you know, its you know, sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. The Chinese are also doing that, uh, you know, in, 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 in Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and so on. Mm -hmm. so, so this is why, um, you know, I mean, organizations like the OIC, I mean, are becoming in increasingly, you know, relevant, you know, by the day, because we live in a world where cooperation is needed, such so that, you know, the resource, you know, transfer can occur, so that, I mean, I mean, I mean, transfer of technology, you know, can occur, you know, so that, I mean, I mean, like diplomatic support, you know, can occur, uh, because Francis. I mean, I mean, we live in a world where you know small states, you know, and most of the OIC countries, you know, can be can be counted you know, as micro states, you know, like the Gambia, you know, for example, have to depend increasingly on the support of others, mm -hmm. okay, to be able to make their, I mean, I mean, voices heard mm -hmm. in the international arena, and an organisation like the OIC gives that platform, because if you are a member, you are already friend. To fifty, um, I mean, fifty-six in other countries, mm -hmm. you know, and and also we should remember that you know, for example, I mean, I mean, ISESCO, mm -hmm. which is the OIC's, I mean, UNESCO, if you like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the wonderful work they are doing mm -hmm. in the protection and the promotion mm -hmm. of Islamic heritage, mm -hmm. you know, such that even you know when these, I mean, I mean, stupid, I mean, I mean, terrorists, you know, you know, were I mean, destroying, you know, mosques and and, and museums. Uh, you know, and monuments, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, I mean the Boko Haram and, and, and Daesh and others. Mm -hmm. I mean, the ISESCO, you know, started working, uh, you know, with, I mean, I mean, UNESCO, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to protect, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, Islamic heritage, uh, you know, and also to make sure that, I mean, the illegal, uh, you know, and illicit trade, mm -hmm. you know, in artifacts, in cultural artifacts, mm -hmm. uh, you know, are, uh, are sort of, are sort of, I mean, I mean, I mean, brought to a, to a halt. So, so you can see that, you know, through, you know, such, you know, parameters, I mean, member states like the Gambia, you know, can also benefit. 
you heard him talk about, I mean, it's an era that I, in fact, that in fact escaped me, mm. ISESCO and some of the organs of the, you know, it's like Organization of Islamic Cooperation. Mm. But I believe, like he said, OIC is becoming increasingly relevant in our day and age. But I want to believe that we also kind of overlooked one aspect. Mm. We are talking about, you know, OIC. But, you know, although efforts are being made, but I believe they're also swimming against the tide in the sense that they also have to contend with the fact that there is this proactive push to ensure globalization. And globalization, to some extent, mm. means lowering whatever you hold there to yes. and accepting whatever is coming from outside. Yes. Yeah. How, how do you think the OIC has done when it comes to you know, weathering the storm? Yeah, um, if you look at it, like you rightly said, um, OIC, that is why most of the um, values, mm -hmm. most of the things that OIC mm -hmm. held very dear, mm -hmm. at the exception, mm -hmm. they are beginning to moderate some of them. Mm -hmm. uh, because OIC, yes, is uh, an organization um, of people of the same faith, mm -hmm. but, you know, Globalization is like a tsunami, mm -hmm. uh, and swimming against the tide of globalization mm -hmm. will also come with certain consequences. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, now if you look at it in OIC, um, if you look at the objectives, some of the objective is to promote, is to even you know promote what we call a human right, mm -hmm. and within human right is a very broad area. Mm -hmm. uh, people are beginning to question mm -hmm. human right. Does that mean that OIC is going to also embrace? LGBT, mm -hmm. as it is being, you know, promoted within the Western, you know, society. Mm -hmm. But that will be a haram. Mm -hmm. From all intent and purposes, it will be a haram for mm -hmm. OIC to say they are going to accept, mm -hmm. you know, uh, LGBT. Mm -hmm. But it will also be difficult for yeah. OIC to stick mm -hmm. to what it believes to be mm -hmm. human right, you know, in the context of, you know, modern globalization. So it's um, a very complex thing, and it is a very troubled water that OIC have to you know, navigate. navigate through. And I believe that was why in as much as you know, yeah. the membership or the body in general yes. agrees and accepts the founding charter of the United Nations yes. but not the Universal Declaration of Human, on rights. human rights. And exactly. I believe they are avoiding having to fall into the spit. Into the spit. Exactly. That's fine. Exactly. But That's if you also look at it critically, mm -hmm. um, within the OIC, the role of Saudi Arabia cannot be the, the the huge mm -hmm. or giant role of Saudi Arabia, you know, that is housing the secretariat mm -hmm. of the organization cannot be overemphasized. Mm -hmm. um, recently, you also see that Saudi is also doing some part of liberalization mm -hmm. within the Saudi society. Mm -hmm. um, Prince Salman, mm -hmm. uh, who is the leader of Saudi now, mm -hmm. is bringing in some reforms, mm -hmm. you know, in order to conform to mm -hmm. this you know, globalization values. For mm -hmm. example, in Saudi before now, women don't, uh, we, we learned, women don't drive, drive cars, cars yes. do not own this thing, mm -hmm. but that has been liberalized. Mm -hmm. uh, even this year, or sometimes last year, um, I read that they are even opening up, you know, to have a um, restaurant or where people can drink. Alcohol. Yeah, that's for a diplomatic for call. Diplomat. Yeah, but it's a, it's a, yeah, it's but a, we can a, also, yes. I mean, excuse me. Yes. I believe the ban yes. that he is considering lifting or has lifted yes. only came into force in 1952. Okay. So within diplomatic quarters, yes. diplomats, yes. non-Saudi diplomats were yes. allowed to drink. Yes. And I believe he's doing it. God knows why. Cinemas are opening up in Saudi Arabia. You know, mm. that is that is the the tide of globalization that OIC have to have to actually contend mm -hmm. that we are talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. This may have informed his choice mm -hmm. of trying to, you know, bring about some of these, some of these reforms, mm -hmm. uh, because a, a country like Saudi Arabia, you know, is a conservative society that 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 we know it. Mm -hmm. So, if they are coming up in the 21st century, what that means is that, as members of the global community, then they also have to moderate, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. some of the conservative uh, values uh, that members of the countries that are essentially drivers, mm -hmm. you know, of OIC held dear to themselves. So uh, OIC cannot uh, but, you know, have to uh, gear up, mm -hmm. you know, for the troubled water of globalization that this is just the beginning. But we pray that they should not lose focus mm -hmm. of what brings them together. 
we believe that Islam is also accommodating. I mean, um, Islam is accommodating, but uh, it shouldn't be watered down so much so that it lose focus on actually what and, it brings. And its essence also. also. Yeah, and first, is, yes, know, yes. I, I mean, I mean, um, like what you know, you know, the professor has has just said. Mm -hmm. I mean, also, um, it's, you know, so task you know the OIC mm -hmm. to you know reappropriate mm -hmm. you know the lost glory. Mm -hmm. You know, of Islam mm -hmm. in science, in technology, mm -hmm. in knowledge production. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. You know, it was um, you know Islam that you know um, during this um, you know great and glorious you know early phase. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know created uh, you know a lot of the systems that you know now we i believe algebra well yeah a lot of the systems that you know we now you know link mm -hmm. you know with western civilization mm -hmm. and western and knowledge and western you know creativity are in fact islamic in origin mm -hmm. so through this organization mm -hmm. you know and maybe we, you know with effect from you know this banjul you know summit you know to have a deliberate policy of reappropriating mm -hmm. you know i mean the great islamic inheritance you know in in in, in knowledge, you know, in history, in, like I said, in algebra, in, in science, in astronomy, you know, in poetry, you know, in sports. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, I mean, at the Olympics, mm -hmm. you know, you have, you know, all the sports that were associated with Islam, mm -hmm. you know, like equestrian, you know, sports, you know, horse riding, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. These are, you know, things that can be appropriated mm -hmm. such that they are put mm -hmm. at the center of world attention, you, you, you know, once again. And so that Islam will, you know, tell to, to, to the rest of the world that, in fact, I mean, contrary to, you know, the, the you know, what we hear in the, in the press, you know, the Orientalism, mm -hmm. you know, as Edward said, you know, described it, Islam, in fact, you know, is the fount, mm -hmm. you know, of, of a lot of the global civilization that, you know, we now, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, find, you know, find ourselves in. Uh, because, for instance, mm -hmm. um, these international organizations, not only the OIC, mm -hmm. you know, like you know, the professor said, um, have to, I mean, I mean, really evolve. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I mean, their evolution has to be fast. Mm -hmm. It must keep up. Uh, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, with the times. Mm -hmm. You know, because you know things mm -hmm. evolve so quickly, so f so, you know, so soon, mm -hmm. that if you are a bit, you know, tardy, mm -hmm. uh, you'll be left behind. And then um, you start to group, you know, for relevance. Right. Yes. Yeah, you talked about something very important, and I believe that will lead us to the next segment in our discussion. Just to remind viewers that they're watching the special panel discussion on the OIC as an organization. We looked at its history, early achievements, some of the challenges, success stories that, you know, can be attributed to its name. And with me is the, Mr. Hasum Sise. Director General National Center for Arts and Culture, and Prof. Dr. Usman Solomon Ayepa, mm -hmm. lecturer of political science at the University of the Gambia. You talked about organizations having to change to remain relevant. Our primary focus during the last segment was the 70s, which was a bit turbulent. The 80s, I believe, were a bit, you know, kind of relatively calm. But in the 90s, a specter reared up its head. It was the specter of terrorism. And I can vividly recall having read one article where the former Algerian president, Abdul Aziz Bouteflika, was talking about the need for moderates or Muslims to reclaim Islam from those claiming to represent Islam on going on a rampage and killing in the name of Islam. He was speaking from experience, because at the height of the war in Algeria then, I believe he was interior minister and was able to quell it to some extent. But I believe the world never paid heed to that. Was the OIC caught unaware in the 90s? As far as you know, terrorism attributed to Islam is concerned. Uh, well, I'm, I'm happy you mentioned uh, I'm a, I'm a flicker, like a green, uh, like a great pan-Africanist and Algeria also a great pan-African nation. I mean, um, we have to, you know, the paradox, Francis, the paradox is, and this is really a paradox, mm -hmm. um, 
OIC member states are the greatest, um, you know, I mean, I mean, victims, mm -hmm. are, the, are the commonest victims mm -hmm. of, um, you know, terrorism, mm -hmm. particularly terrorism associated, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with Islamists. Mm -hmm. If you look at a country like Algeria in the 90s, mm -hmm. you know, fees, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I mean, killed, you know, thousands of, of Algerians. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you name most of the of the countries that have you know gone through or are going through, mm -hmm. uh, you know this you know terrorist menace, mm -hmm. uh, you know OIC member states. You see, so if for anything, I mean the fight against terrorism should be a central, I mean preoccupation, you know of the OIC. It should be a central a priority of the OIC. Uh, now and another thing, it has to do with how um, to make the youth um, in the OIC member states, how to empower them, you know, you know, job creation. For example, you know, what can the creative industries in the OIC, you know, I mean, a member states do, you know, to bring jobs to the youth. Now the issue of women empowerment also, you know, because these are things you have to tackle to be seen to be relevant, because they are, I mean, contemporary, you know, priorities. You see, so you have terrorism, the fight against terrorism, the fight against youth unemployment, and also the struggle, you know, for women empowerment. Uh, you know, and finally, um, the issue of climate change. You see, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I mean, the OIC member states, mm -hmm. maybe a member state like Guyana, you know, has a pristine, you know, rainforest, mm -hmm. and then you come to, you know, a member state in the Sahel, mm -hmm. like Niger, for example, you know, Sahelian. Mm -hmm you know, semi-arid, you know, desert, you know, you see. So you can see that, I mean, I mean, even in, 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 in uh, on the issue of global warming and climate change, um, that also should be a central, um, you know, I mean, it should be a top priority, you know, for the OIC, because the OIC member states are usually at the extreme ends of, 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 the, of the global environmental, you know, challenges. You are right. Iraq at times, you know, they're talking about, you know, the temperature going up to about 50 and the like. Yeah. And, you know, because of all these flares and the like. And the fact that, you know, because of the nature of the geography or the location, their location, yeah. you know, they cannot boast of, you know, huge forests like you talked about Guyana and all these things. But it is also important to say that in as much as Guyana is up there, it is not insulated also from the, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, of I mean, course, it is not only this of you know climate change. <laughs> of course, you are it from Nigeria. I mean, I mean, doctor. Yes. If anything, you know, we've seen you know the challenge posed by those claiming to be Muslims and started to you know, you know, impose their own version of you know Sharia and then they, they have of their thing in your country. Don't you think you know the organization can you know at least you know, to some extent come to your aid or in fact you know see you know provide some kind of assistance? Yes. Um, thank you for that question, and uh, I want to also thank uh, um, Mr. Sisi, uh, Mr. Sisi, you mm -hmm. know, for that intervention mm -hmm. in terms of the need for OIC mm -hmm. to take up the uh, fight against terrorism mm -hmm. very, very seriously. Mm -hmm. um, you know, globally now there is what we call Islamophobia. Mm -hmm. Islamophobia is this fear that you know, once Islam is mentioned mm -hmm. to some persons, Islam is associated with terror mm -hmm. uh, because. Um, for too long, mm -hmm. maybe OIC has been quiet, mm -hmm. or its counter-terrorism, mm -hmm. you know, initiatives mm -hmm. have not been too loud mm -hmm. for people to know. And so, you know, sometimes silence mm -hmm. could be misinterpreted to mean consent. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you look at uh, part of the, you know, goals of mm -hmm. OIC, mm -hmm. is to also fight against terrorism. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you look at it for so long, mm -hmm. it is terrorism is being fought by the Western power, mm -hmm. and so this give impression, you know, in most Muslim countries or mm -hmm. countries where you have preponderant number of Muslim to be that um, what is called terrorism is you know uh, Western fabrication because they have not here or they have not seen the OIC taking the the fight, and for me, um, OIC has that duty. You know, uh, OIC is the legitimate organization, um, you know, that has the reach, that has the economic potential, that has the political clout, that has diplomatic leverage, you know, to actually come to the global, you know, to um, come to the global audience to say, look, terror 
is anti-Islam. Islam does not promote, you know, terrorism. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, like you mentioned in the case of Nigeria, mm -hmm. um, if you know the quantum of destruction mm -hmm. and dislocation that Boko Haram, mm -hmm. um, you know, has caused mm -hmm. in Nigeria, mm -hmm. if not because, you know, Nigeria, we believe, Nigerians believe that there is a special interest that God has for Nigeria. Mm -hmm. If what happened in Nigeria in the last, in 2009, that Boko Haram activities became open, mm -hmm. If it happened to other country, they will collapse mm -hmm. under the heavy, you know, um, weight of insecurity that we have had as a result of, you know, whether you call it a Boko Haram or you call it a um, um, Iswa, Islamic mm -hmm. State in mm -hmm. West African province and all of that. Mm -hmm. So the OIC, you know, is that organization, like he rightly said, you know, that should come up with a kind of pragmatic mm -hmm. approach mm -hmm. to fight against terrorism. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know very well uh, that most of the people that claim to be fighting, you know, for um, for the cause of Islam, mm -hmm. they are fighting for, you know, their own group or primordial interest. But Narrow using Islam, interest. yes, interest. Mm -hmm. But you know, because perhaps organizations like OIC have not come out to take a decisive position mm -hmm. or a very clear position uh, with respect to what you know uh, should be done to such organization, it appears as if there is a tacit support. Mm -hmm. And that itself has fueled this, you know, skepticism in the minds of many people, mm -hmm. you know, against Islam and against OIC. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you an example. Before, the membership of Nigeria in OIC often, you know, is a subject of debate. Mm -hmm. Because Nigeria it does, is a very wonderful country that if you come to our country, you know, is divided along this religious line. You mm -hmm. go to the northern part of the country, um, is predominantly Muslim, Muslim and yes. then you go to the southern region uh, part of our country is also predominantly Christians. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at it in Africa, Nigeria is where you have the largest population of Christian community, mm -hmm. 88 point something percent, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 88 point, mm -hmm. I think four or six million mm -hmm. Christian population. Mm -hmm. uh, that is more than the Christian. That means that Christians in Nigeria alone uh, is more than population of about six African countries, mm -hmm. if, you put, if you put that in, you know, in context. And so, for many Christians, you know, they are not comfortable mm -hmm. because if you discuss, they, they don't see Nigeria membership of OIC, mm -hmm. you know, the benefit that it can bring. Rather, mm -hmm. what they see is that, oh, um, you know, um, the, the, the Muslim leaders have taken our country to come and to go and join, you know, uh, organization that promotes, that hate Christians, mm -hmm. that promote terrorism and all of that. But that is not that is not it. You know that OIC through OIC initiative and summit like this, mm -hmm. many countries have been able to improve infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, it has also it also used it can be used as a leverage mm -hmm. for members to also aspire to positions. Mm -hmm. You know within the broader international organization like the UN. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, I believe that o OIC as a block within the United Nations mm -hmm. can put forward can support the candidacy of Nigeria or can support the cause mm -hmm. that Nigeria you know, anything Nigeria aspires to. Mm -hmm. But our people don't look at that. Mm -hmm. They look, you know, they look only at the bad side. Uh, at the bad side. And so, if country, if organization like OIC mm -hmm. could come up to say, look, what Boko Haram mm -hmm. or what ISWAP, what they are doing does not represent what we represent and come out to issue, you know, very strong worded condemnation mm -hmm. to what they are doing and also partner with Nigerian security agent, you know, to bring these guys, you know, to account. Mm -hmm. I mean, people will that is the way to, you know, to also address this issue of Islamophobia. And the way to address the issue of Islamophobia. I was, you know, if you drive, I was in Gambia in 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are in Gambia, even two, three years ago, and Gambia of today now, you have seen a lot of differences. Mm -hmm. You see infrastructural, you know, improvement in terms of road construction, mm -hmm. you know, and all of that. So these are some of the benefits, mm -hmm. you know, that an organization like OIC could bring to member countries. But for as long as OIC have not tackled, you know, head on this problem of terrorism, which has given the OIC and uh, Islam in general bad name, um, um, yeah, people will continue to have, you know, misgiving. Um, albeit, in my own opinion, uh, these are wrong, you know, perception. But if perception are not addressed, you know, it could become reality. It could become reality in the minds of those. And I want to believe that one thing they should be discredited yes and then they should also be stripped of any claim of legitimacy, claim of legitimacy. and the oic should be very proactive yes not only in actions but also making i mean making sure that 
its activities, actions, yeah. benefits, and what it is doing, yeah. not only in member countries, but yeah. the views of the Muslims that it is representing yeah. on the global arena yeah. or in the international system, is you know, made visible. Yeah. Recently, there was a lot of talk about you know, the sure. Sunni Shia divide. divide. And I believe the Sunni Shia divide is not only one factor that is reducing the OIC's potential to make more headway when it comes to championing the cause of Muslims. You also have, you know, I mean, I mean, countries that align themselves with certain superpowers and the like, and also the geopolitical competition right now in the Middle East. You have countries, small countries that are, you know, punching above their weight. <laughs> And there are others that feel that, you know, they've been left out of the cake and are now trying to rush. And I believe that since they are the main drivers or they are the most powerful countries in the, board, in, the in, in, in the group, instead of, you know, combining efforts to, you know, push forward the, the joint agenda of, you know, promoting the welfare of Muslims, I believe the resources are being spent trying to bring down each other. Now, Francis, I, I, I think this is why uh, this Banjil summit mm -hmm. um, is really, uh, um, you know, it can be a historic one. For the reason that, I mean, this is a summit that can sort of um, help, uh, you know, to bridge all those gaps that you have rightly identified, mm -hmm. you know, as, you know, standing in the way of the OIC. How? reaching um, its full potential. Mm -hmm. One, um, by the nature of our country, mm -hmm. we are not known to be punching above our oh, weight. <laughs> no, we are, because if you look at no, the wait, wait, I'm coming, I'm coming. Okay. I'm coming. So, so everybody mm -hmm. is comfortable with the Gambia. Mm -hmm. and that is a big, I mean, I mean advantage that we have. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody knows of to be pro this or mm -hmm. pro that, or mm -hmm. to be anti this or to be anti that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think, therefore, mm -hmm. I mean, every um, OIC member state mm -hmm. uh, can be comfortable mm -hmm. with not only coming to the Gambia, but also with the Gambia sitting mm -hmm. on that chair. Mm -hmm. You see for the next three years. That is very, very important mm -hmm. because sometimes, you know, I mean, I mean, things cannot uh, go quickly mm -hmm. or as they are supposed to, you know, because the country sitting on the chair is conflicted with mm -hmm. this and that, mm -hmm. has some baggage, maybe maybe colonial baggage, mm -hmm. you know, superpower baggage, that's, that's, that's. Mm -hmm. But for us, luckily, we don't have that baggage. So, Francis, maybe, um, on being known to us, um, we are about to really enter into the right pages mm -hmm. of the history books with this OIC summit. Because so many of the lingering, mm -hmm. and really I use that word, you know, advisedly, lingering mm -hmm. problems, you know, facing the Muslim world can be sorted out, beginning at this, you know, conflict, uh, at, this, at conflict this summit. summit. You know, starting with the Gaza, I mean, I mean, I mean, like what is happening, in, you know, in Gaza, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, maybe everything should be done so yeah. that by the time that the summit ends, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I mean, I mean early next week, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there will be like like a ceasefire, and it can happen. Mm -hmm. The OIC, if mm -hmm. the OIC wants it, you know, it will happen, and then we will say it happened at Banjul. Imagine, I mean, these great Muslim countries, you know, the Iranians, you know, the Saudis, mm -hmm. you know, coming, you know, in Banjul to shake hands. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 make peace. Just Imagine how like historic, that. Mm -hmm. how historic that could be, and that can happen here mm. at, at this OIC summit. May God I mean, I mean, it's a prayer. Yeah, for I Irish. mean, I mean, you know, imagine the, uh, you know, the Qatari and the Saudis, uh, you know, burying the hatchet, you know, uh, uh, here in Banjul. It's possible. You see, it's mm -hmm. possible. I mean, I mean, so so that uh, me, I'm very very optimistic mm -hmm. that this Banjul summit. Mm -hmm. Um, can be one of the greatest and most fruitful, I mean, um, international, uh, you know, summits ever to have happened, because um, the Gambia has this singular, mm -hmm. uh, you know, privilege, mm -hmm. you know, of not being known for anything mm -hmm. except for peace, peace. stability, mm -hmm. you know, regular elections, mm -hmm. and you know, religious tolerance. You are right. Do you agree with yes, Mr. Uh, Sisi yes, and why? Yes, I, I agree with him because um, 
Gambia, well, beyond the, the small size of Gambia, Gambia is a small country that has played, uh, take on bigger role within the OIC mm -hmm. um, and under international bodies. Mm -hmm. But with respect to OIC, um, you mentioned before, uh, Gambia was able to, medi uh, to mediate between yeah, two powerful yeah, countries, yes. you know, to bring about peace, mm -hmm. um, to end that war between two oil giant nations that are members of OIC, Iran and Iraq, mm -hmm. in the 80s. Um, sometimes in 2019, um, on behalf of OIC, Gambian government took it upon itself, you know, to to write a protest letter to the United Nations, you know, um, to draw the attention of the world, you know, to the plight of Muslim minorities, the Rohingyas, right. um, yeah. in Myanmar. Mm -hmm. So that also shows that Gambia is acting, you know, in in consonance mm -hmm. with the principles of OIC in that regard, because. Um, the Rohingyas are also human beings, and you know whatever that was going on there uh, depends on where you are looking at it from. It's not short of genocide, mm -hmm. you know, because thousands of these people have been rendered stateless. Mm -hmm. So Gambia has taken, you know, that uh, important role because mm -hmm. it wrote that letter on behalf of the OIC and even went on to take action. Action, yes, legal action. Yes, yes, yes. In, yes. Yeah, France is ridiculous. Yes. Uh, yes. You, uh, I remember, I mean, I mean, I mean, answer is true, you know, the lady herself, mm -hmm. yes. uh, you know, how she was, I mean, cornered mm -hmm. by our, our lawyers, you know, mm -hmm. our, our, our attorney general, yeah. Yeah. at the Hague, yes. you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I mean, that was, you know, this small country, yes. you know, standing up, yeah. you know, for an oppressed Muslim minority, yeah. like you said, yeah. in, in Myanmar. You see, so so I mean, I mean, and 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 maybe doctor as a political scientist will also, um, you know, speak on this. Thank is, are we also in Gambia has 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 like if you like, like the moral audacity mm -hmm. to also, um, not only host this this uh, you know summit, mm -hmm. but also to excel mm -hmm. during the you know three years chairmanship. One is our role in promoting mm -hmm. a peaceful Islam. Mm -hmm. You know the works of Professor Lamisani mm -hmm. you know, on the Jahanka, mm -hmm. you know, and and how they promote, you know, the peaceful path of Islam, you know, through the daras, mm -hmm. you know, through the religious villages, you know, through the religious ceremonies, you know. I mean, books and books have been written mm -hmm. on that, you know, peaceful, you know, strand of Islam, mm -hmm. which is espoused, you know, in this country. I remember, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, like I said. Um, you know, Salaudra's role mm -hmm. in ending the Iran Iraq conflict. Remember also, even in the production of knowledge, mm -hmm. how Gambian scholarship, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in Islam, mm -hmm. I mean, um, 50 years ago, mm -hmm. well, 51 years ago, um, Dr. Omar Yassinio mm -hmm. defended successfully a PhD uh, a dissertation mm -hmm. at McGill University in Canada, mm -hmm. you know, on the Sufi um, Islam and, and, you know, with a case study of Al Haji Omar Tal, mm -hmm. you see. And, and that, you know, set of, you know, lot of academic interest, mm -hmm. you know, on Sufism mm -hmm. and how West African Islam, mm -hmm. you know, is really, I mean, was, I mean, so, you know, sort of characterized uh, by accommodation, mm -hmm. you see. And then, and then, and I remember also in diplomacy, mm -hmm. you see, I mean, how this country at the very beginning mm -hmm. after independence, mm -hmm. you know, opened embassies in the Middle East, mm -hmm. you know, in Libya, mm -hmm. you know, in Saudi Arabia. You see, so as to uh, you know bring together, I mean, I mean, I mean, Islamic Ummah. You see, so you can see that I mean mm -hmm. the Rohingya case, and that professor has just mentioned, mm -hmm. it's just one in a long, long list mm -hmm. of interventions by this country mm -hmm. to not only promote Islam, mm -hmm. uh, but really also to to um, to like you know project mm -hmm. a, you know a new image mm -hmm. for Islam. Or the, even the real image of Islam, because I believe Islam is all about peace. Good. And you know, Islam as we know it also, yeah. I yeah. believe, yeah. respects yeah. people of other faiths. Yeah. 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 It is clearly stated, yes. yes sir. It is clearly yeah. stated in, yeah. the it is in the Gambia yes. 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 that we have the oldest yes. I mean, surviving mm -hmm. in Methodist church in Black Africa, yes. in Georgetown. Yes. Recently, I mean, I mean, the right reverend, I mean, I mean, Bani Manga mm -hmm. officiated, you know, gave a very, very powerful, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I mean, service during the bicentennial. Right. The first Christian mm -hmm. burial mm -hmm. in black Africa, mm -hmm. uh, it was on James Island. Right. So you can see here is a country also 
that has over 600 years yes. of Christian presence. All right. So that issue of, like the professor is saying, of yes. religious tolerance, yes. you see, how Sadauda, I mean, also was very, 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 very tight friendship mm -hmm. with some of the great the OIC, you know, leaders, mm -hmm. like in fact, mm -hmm. in Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. like, I mean, I mean, Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto mm -hmm. of Pakistan, Pakistan yes. like Majibur Rahman, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in Bangladesh. Bangladesh, you know, I mean, I mean the sultans in, in Oman, mm -hmm. in Khabuz, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the emirs, you know, of Kuwait, the Al-Saba family. These were very, very good friends mm -hmm. of our founding president, mm -hmm. you see. So, so really our country, mm -hmm. our country is, is well placed to play a role. very, very, very successful, mm -hmm. you know, role mm -hmm. in, the o, in the OIC. All right. Just to remind those watching us that, you know, this is a special panel discussion on the OIC as an organization. And with me is the Mr. Hasum Sisi, Director General of the National Center for Arts and Culture, and Dr. Usman Solomon Ayekba, Political Science Lecturer at the University of the Gambia. We've looked at, you know, the various aspects of, you know, the organization, its founding, early history, achievements, the challenges it is confronted with. And, you know, it seems as if, you know, we're about to run out of time. But I want to believe this thing could have continued for on and on and on and on because I find, you know, my presence in the, or the company of these two gentlemen very, very, very educative and also very, very helpful okay. when it comes, you know, being, you know, able to look at, you know, some of the issues that will you know, be just brushed aside into context. They are, they are real professionals and I, I believe they have genuine knowledge and have been, you know, following the development of the organization itself. Earlier, before my intervention, you talked about some of the challenges that we are confronted with in this 21st century. And I believe one of them is climate change. The other one is youth unemployment. Although we believe that, by and large, our part of the continent is, you know, kind of peaceful. The Sahel tribe now is one of the most challenged when it comes to, you know, security. Yes, you're absolutely right. I mean, I mean... Can the OIC help push back, you know, the kind of, you know, ugly things we're seeing? Yeah, I would like to start Sahel. here. Yes, I would, I would really like to start. Okay, can I mean, you yes, yes, the OIC can do a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, Francis, we have to uh, stress um, this issue of resource transfer. Mm -hmm. Like the professor said, uh, many of these, I mean, people, you know, calling themselves, you know, Islamists, have, you, you know, parochial, mm -hmm. primordial also, mm -hmm. but very selfish mm -hmm. in interest. Mm -hmm. you know, all what they want is livelihood. Mm -hmm. You know, they loot, they rape, they kill. Mm -hmm. You know to fill their pockets. Mm -hmm. So now, I mean, I mean, there can be a way mm -hmm. where the richer OIC member states mm -hmm. can really come in. And this has to be like a muscle plan, sort of. Mm -hmm. Yes, a muscle plan, sort of, to mm -hmm. the Sahel countries, mm -hmm. so that they will pump mm -hmm. wealth, yes. you know, resources, mm -hmm. you know, in the rural areas, and also in agriculture, expertise. expertise. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, support education. Mm -hmm. You know, support, I mean, um, women's empowerment, you know, support climate change, uh, you know, I mean, matters. So that these, you know, foolish terrorists will not be able to recruit, mm -hmm. you see, and mislead the youths. Mm -hmm. So me, if you ask me, the OIC can do something to bring peace in the Sahel, be it in Mali, mm -hmm. in Niger, you know, in Burkina Faso, I mean, 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 in the Boko Haram areas, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in Cameroon, in, in, in Chad, in, in northern Nigeria, and so on, through resource transfer and the transfer of knowledge and expertise, so that these communities, you know, will grow into prosperity, and the terrorists will no longer have a fertile recruiting ground. I believe also, excuse me, let me just add on to what he said mm. to be able to additional, get you to maybe additional, yes. maybe support or add on to something that, I yes. mean, add on to what he's just said. Yes. He talked about, you know, tech, technology and skills transfer, transfer. the setting of a martial phone, mm. which I believe was able to help Europe, Europe. Well, did, you after know, the, rise after from the, the war. ashes after the war. Yeah. Yeah. Those, I believe, although they can have an impact, but they maybe could fade out, the impact could fade out maybe after one or two years or I mean after several decades. But don't you think that by cultivating three tribes, I mean three ties, 
they can help lift up their fellow Muslims who are now wallowing maybe in abject poverty, especially in sub-Saharan Africa. Yes. Um, thank you, and you know, I quite agree with uh, Mr. Sisse um, when he mentioned that one of the ways that OIC could make it presence mm -hmm. and it activities appreciated within the you know the Sahel mm -hmm. um, and in this in this regard within the West Africa mm -hmm. is through resource transfer. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The best way or the only way you can actually make terrorism unattractive, mm -hmm. you know, to youths mm -hmm. is to put something mm -hmm. in their pocket. Mm -hmm. If, for example, I know, you know, I know where my next meal is going to come from legitimately, mm -hmm. it will become very difficult for you to persuade me mm -hmm. to come and join terror, mm -hmm. for you to, for me to go into the bush carrying gun, you know, kidnapping, raping, and doing all sort of things. Mm -hmm. So I quite agree with, I quite agree with him with, um, with that respect. Mm -hmm. And he also mentioned something that is very, very key: mm -hmm. education. Um, the kind of education that you know you go to, especially in northern Nigeria, there is what we call almajiri. Almajiri education system. There, whereby, is, there is road learning. Yes. So you give that to a child, mm -hmm. you just go maybe after two, three, four years of that child formative stage, you go and dump that child, you know, with um, an Arabic teacher, no parental guidance, you know, and poverty has also fueled this thing. You don't know what that teacher, mm -hmm. what that, you know, Islamic scholar, so called Islamic scholar, is putting in that child. Mm -hmm. and that Almajiri has become a very fruitful ground for Boko Haram to recruit, mm -hmm. for many people to recruit. Mm -hmm. So if OIC could pump money, and mm -hmm. of course there is a work we have done that we have been able to establish a nexus between poverty mm -hmm. and attraction to Boko Haram or mm -hmm. to attraction to terrorism generally. Mm -hmm. So if, if poverty is reduced or is addressed, if right education, mm -hmm. it could be Islamic education, but let that right Islamic education mm -hmm. you know, be given to these people. To see that, because I have also heard some Muslim leaders say that, you know, Islam, in the Quran, it says that the Holy Prophet said, if you, if you, if you save the life of one man or one person, mm -hmm. it's as if you have saved the life of the entire humanity. Mm -hmm. That shows that Islam is tolerance. Mm -hmm. That means that Islam preaches against. But, you know, the version that these terrorists are giving to mm -hmm. the youth that they are recruiting is different. Mm -hmm. So through right education, like he rightly said, sponsored mm -hmm. by the OIC, you know, people get this right, this thing, it becomes very difficult. Because I believe also that at the heart of Islam is humanity. Mm -hmm. It's humanity. So we can do that, OIC can do that, but and OIC has the resources. Mm -hmm. Yes, we look at the big countries, the resource endowed, mm -hmm. you know, countries. They can bring in a form of Marshall Plan. Mm -hmm. um, they are doing that now, but then they need to step it. You know to step up mm -hmm. because i also learned that um scholarship through the islamic development bank uh, and i know that islamic development bank i think is one of the uh, organs of oic you know they give scholarship to people mm -hmm. to go to school to get trained you know and all of that mm -hmm. so if they can do that i think they will be able to stem the tide mm -hmm. of this riding incident uh, rising incidents of um terrorism within the sahel belt i also subscribe to what to what he said as you know, measures to be taken by OIC. And by doing that, mm -hmm. OIC will be gradually, you mm -hmm. know, uh, also addressing this issue of, you know, Islamophobia mm -hmm. or addressing um, issue of misconception mm -hmm. that most people, mm -hmm. you know, have about uh, not just the OIC, but about Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, because once um, everybody live in peace, you have what to eat, you go to school, I mean, you, you find it difficult to be threatening people all around. It, it becomes that. Because in Nigeria today now, um, in Nigeria, especially in northern Nigeria today, you go there, a lot of destruction, you know, societal dislocation. You can imagine having a child that has been in Sandisa Forest, mm -hmm. those Chibok girls, you know. Yeah, they're yet that, to have been yeah, the power of all of them. Still. In fact, even if you release those people, I don't think they can ever become normal human again, no matter... Mm -hmm. You know, it kind of uh, they cannot fully be reintegrated, reintegrated into society. society. You yeah. can imagine you have a child grow up in the midst of terrorists. You know, marry off to about three, four commanders of this terror of this terrorist. You know, it becomes very difficult for very them very difficult. to at least you know, yes. share their very, past very, and then live a normal life. Yeah, normal life. Yeah, I mean, we are fast running out of time, but I believe one issue also is you know irregular migration. Some of these member countries of the OIC. 
serve as transit points or in fact at times you know serve as you know host countries we're talking of libya we're talking of algeria in our Please. case we're talking of tunisia we're talking of morocco should that not also be on the agenda Oh, well, yes. I mean, I, I mean, uh, that has to be on the agenda. Like we said, the youth affairs mm -hmm. is youth matters, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which we pointed out here as yes. a priority. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, like some of this, uh, you know, movement, uh, some of this, you know, migration is induced mm -hmm. uh, by the ravages, you know, yeah. of the of the of the capricious weather. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, climate change. I mean, I mean, um, you know, let you know, capricious weather. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, I mean, these are. In a priority areas, and like I said, the something that has to be avoided um, at this level, uh, you know, of the OIC in, in summits like this is really um, to be, you know, consumed by the distraction, you know, of politics. Mm -hmm. you know, it's quite easy, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, because political issues are evolving okay. daily, you know, on the hour. Such that other issues, you know, can easily, yeah, <laughs> you know, can easily, uh, you know, be uh, be neglected. So uh, you know, uh, so that politics is important because it has to be there. I mean, because you know, nobody can avoid this Gaza. Uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the massacres, uh, you know, going on in Gaza. You know, I see cannot really, I mean, I mean, countenance that. Mm -hmm. But also, I mean, there are uh, issues like this, like irregular migration. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, youth uh, matters. You know, climate, climate change matters. Change. That also should feature. Mm. I mean, I mean, as priority in topics for discussion. All right. Yes, and action. All right, doctor. Yes. Would you like to add on to what he's just said before we wrap up? Yes. Um. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah, basically, it. that's it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, said it. Yeah, said it all. So, why is it should uh, take advantage mm -hmm. of this historic summit by mm -hmm. June 2024, mm -hmm. summit of OIC, mm -hmm. you know, to be at the forefront mm -hmm. of addressing nagging development challenges uh, confronting particularly the sub-Sahara Africa. Uh, because if you look at it from our, from when we started, Africa constitutes almost half mm -hmm. of the OIC membership. Mm -hmm. And so um, mm -hmm. Africa needs a lot of you know, uh, intervention, mm -hmm. uh, development intervention, peace initiative, you know, from organizations like OIC. And OIC has the economic leverage to deliver this to Africa. And by doing this, OIC will register, you know, itself in the minds of not just Muslim, not just Muslim uh, within the sub-region, but it will also register its presence and, you know, attraction, attractiveness to non-Muslim alike. I mean, just going through, you know, it's like Wikipedia. I came across this, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, point that, you know, it's like the body is represented at the United Nations mm -hmm. and also at the European Union. But having at least 20 something countries from mm -hmm. Africa being members, mm -hmm. and, you know, there is nowhere I can come across information pointing to any suggestion that, you know, the OIC is represented at the African Union. Is that not a, I mean, a serious omission? Well, if I, I'm just why I said, I mean, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. let's hope and pray that these issues all get, I mean, I mean, I mean, settled here in Banjul. If, for example, I mean, after the summit, I think there should be a permanent representative to the EU. Yeah, I mean, permanent representative of the OIC to the EU, EU and also a permanent liaison office in the Gambia to be able to follow up mm -hmm. on some of the matters. Mm -hmm. Just as we have the UN, you know, presence here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, even have now an ECOWAS presence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, after the summit, the OIC should also have a permanent mission here in the Gambia, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to follow up on, on, on some of the, you know, very, very urgent matters that the Banjul Summit has, I mean, agreed upon. All right. Yes. I hope the powerful, you know, individuals, heads of state and government attending the summit you know, are listening to people like you and a doctor. Yeah. Once again, my name is Francis Mendy, and you've been watching this special panel discussion, you know, in preparation for the forthcoming OIC summit. And we looked at the OIC as an organization. We looked at, you know, almost all aspects of the body. Yeah. I was able to do that in the company of Mr. Hasum Sisi, Director General National Center for Arts and Culture. I'm Dr. Usman Solomon Ayekba, political science lecturer at the University of the Gambia. Till we come your way next time, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of our programs.